And good afternoon. I'm Glenn Shuck, reporter for 1010 Wins. This is Facebook Live on 1010 Wins. On this afternoon, we have a very special guest from the great state of New Jersey, my governor, by the way, as well, uh, Governor Phil Murphy. Thank you for your time. Today. Great to be on. Honored to be with you. We were talking about it as you walked in about traffic, and that's, that's gonna, where we're going to start this. So it's kind of related to that, so we're going to jump right in with this on Facebook Live yep. about congestion pricing. That's what a lot of people are talking about uh, in the last week. I know you did make some comments about some pushback from New Jersey. Uh, Mayor Fulop in Jersey City yesterday made some comments about maybe charging New Yorkers as they head back to Coming Jersey in, City. Yep. What, what's your reaction to that? Well, I'm not sure about that, but I, I will, I, I'll will i tell you what I've said, Glenn. First of all, it's great to be here. I've, I've got a lot of affection for this room. I was here many years ago when I was running, so I'm, it's good to be back. Um, I have no issue as a conceptual matter with congestion pricing, but I got a big issue with making New Jersey uh, commuters pay a double tax. And I know it's early, uh, but it looks like in the early uh, moments that the Lincoln and Holland Tunnel are, are part of the zone, so they shouldn't be an issue. But the George Washington Bridge, which I think is 60 percent, 60 percent of our commuting traffic in and out of New York right. is not part of it. And that's that's a problem. So we got to we got to. We're going to keep working on that till we get that to a better place. And what can what can happen here? I mean, there's so many people. The Jersey people are not happy. New Yorkers are not happy. Nobody's <laughs> happy about this. So how, how do we get people happy? Is there an end game here? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I I had a meeting actually with with a with a a, a good uh, friend who was keen to these things in the New York side earlier today. It's early. Uh, but it's going to have to work for New Jersey commuters, or we can't sign on to that. Uh, and you can't have haves and have-nots. And think about that for a minute. Uh, either you've got folks in the George Washington Bridge paying double, which is unacceptable, or you've got them rerouting either to the Lincoln or the Holland, uh, which will explode the congestion there on both sides of the Hudson, including New York City. Uh, or you've got them going on to NJ Transit buses or trains. And NJ Transit is slowly but steadily and surely getting back on its feet. But that'll be a big challenge. So we got to get this to a better place. That was my next question. You followed right into it. Now, New Jersey residents are saying, OK, maybe I'll leave my car home yeah. and I'll jump on a train in, in Bergen County, say Ramsey or somewhere like yep. that. But you got to be able to accommodate these people. Can yep. NJT accommodate uh, tens of thousands of more people who say they don't want to drive now? Or? We'll see. I mean, NJ Transit was uh, not that long ago the top rated commuter rail and bus system in America. And it will be again. We will get there. Uh, if you all of a sudden have a flood of folks coming in in your, in your work back process, that'll be challenging. My, my strong preference and my strong uh, desire and objective will be to nip this in the bud and get to a better resolution than the current proposal. Because you know, is it going to be a New York versus New Jersey thing? Is it going to get that bad? You Listen, think? I mean, we, I, I hope not. We work well. Uh, uh, we, we work all really well together uh, right. through the Port Authority, through the Gateway Development Corporation. We're not happy that the Trump administration hasn't gotten there yet on the Gateway Tunnel, but we're chipping away at that. Uh, I'm an optimist, even though I'm frustrated. We work very closely with New York, both uh, Governor Cuomo's administration, Mayor de Blasio, as well as the congressional delegations. So I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope we get to a, a, a sensible resolution on this. Glenn Schock again from 1010 Wins with Governor Murphy from New Jersey. We're honored to have him in uh, studio here on Facebook Live. You segued again for me already with the Gateway Tunnel. I'm doing now. my best, Glenn. This is good. I, I'm, maybe I, you know, you already, you knew, you knew it was coming. <laughs> I, read um, the, I read the cliff notes. The Gateway Tunnel again, dude. This is going back so many years, and now President Trump, I think, has made it pretty clear that he's he's not on board. Correct? Not yet. Not yet. So I am. Uh, there was a meeting of some of our associates, and I say our collectively Gateway associates with. Some from the Department of Transportation. There's been a fair amount of back and forth recently. I'm hoping to speak to a senior representative in the administration as early as tomorrow. Uh, not there yet, but the, the logic, Glenn, is so overwhelming and so compelling, not just for New Jersey or New York, for the entire Northeast Corridor. 20% of the American GDP depends on this, on this uh, Northeast Corridor. The tunnels are 109 years old. There aren't enough of them. Uh, if the Arc Tunnel had not been canceled by Governor Christie, which I think was a huge blunder, that would be open today. Unfortunately, we got to start again. Again, the logic is incredibly compelling. And Glenn, I think for folks who are watching and or listening, um, they know this, but the Gateway Projects, which adds up to a really big number, 
25 to 30 billion is actually a family of projects. It's right. the Portal Bridge mm -hmm. in uh, on the Jersey side. It's a it's something under the new Hudson Yards, a steel casing. It's Penn Station rehabilitation, and importantly, it's a new a new set of tunnels, a new tunnel under the Hudson. So we're not there yet. We're working closely together uh, with New York and with our, with our delegations. I'm frustrated, but I'm cautiously still optimistic. I know Gover Governor Cuomo with the Canarsie Tunnel, with the with the L train. This went on for years as well. People in Brooklyn were even moving out. They were so worried about how that was going to play out. And he's decided to pull back and do an upgrade, a very expensive one, rather than a complete yep. project. Was that something that would be possible for Gateway then? Maybe just make tens of millions in repairs and not the, the big the, alloc allocation? There's a fair amount of discussion in the press on that in, in, literally in the past day or two. Perhaps... Uh, but even, and I'm not an engineer, and I, but I've toured the tunnels and, 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 and seen it with my own eyes. And by the way, if not only are they 109 years old, but Superstorm Sandy did, did a lot of damage to these tunnels. The problem is you're still skinny down to two little tunnels, and we need a lot more capacity. So even if you could fix what is there, and I'm not an engineer, so I don't know, uh, that, that is uh, a step but it is not remotely the entire uh, journey that we need to travel. We need a lot more capacity coming in and out of New York and across uh, under the Hudson River. I mean, this, this whole project, you know, the, the, the back and forth between New Jersey and New York, it's so critical to our future, though, right? I mean, this is There's it. There's no question. This is it. I mean, this is a classic where New York and New Jersey are completely aligned. You know, on congestion pricing, uh, I hope we'll be aligned, but at the end of the day, I'm the governor of New Jersey. Right. And I got to make sure that Jersey commuters are looked after. On this one, there's complete, there's complete unanimity. There's complete agreement. And by the way, across both the Hudson and across the political aisle, which gives me optimism uh, that not only are, are, are the facts compelling uh, and the energy is on our side, but we'll be able to convince the Trump administration, I hope, eventually. Um, when John from Roselle actually was on Facebook and actually managed to send Please me a message Please well. apologize to John that I didn't do a segue for him. For, but you're, you're two for three so far, okay. though. Um, his issue is property taxes. He's concerned about you know, how much we – he actually made a point saying – we, we get a lot of great things in New Jersey, many yep. great things, but we pay unbelievably high yep. taxes. Your thoughts going forward? I mean, is, there, is it a point that we can say that property taxes may level off in the future? I mean, you can't really say that right well, now. Well, listen, last year, and, and it's John, right, from Roselle? Yes. Uh, so to John, I hope he's watching. Last year was the, was the smallest increase on average in property taxes in New Jersey on record, period. Not just the past five years, 10 years, 20, on record. Smallest increase. They still went up. I won't be happy until we bend that curve and they start coming down. And I want John to know uh, that we're laser focused on that. Folks understand, and it sounds like John was, was referencing this, that it, New Jersey is a good value for money state. In other words, you pay a premium mm -hmm. to be there, but you get a rich basket of stuff back in exchange. I inherited a state that was a was a, a train wreck, no, no pun intended, uh, where the premium w had skyrocketed. But the basket of stuff back at the same time had shrunk. So I'm trying like heck to get that back into alignment so that folks say, you know what? They got the top couple of public school systems in America. They got a transit system that's better than anybody's. We're the densest state in the nation. We got to move people around. Right. Uh, that it's a great quality of life. A great save the, uh, save the Children says it's the number one state in America to raise a kid which is a big deal. But people don't want to feel like at the same time they appreciate that. They don't want to get their eyes ripped out. So that's why we are all in on homestead rebates. Um, I presented a budget that has $1.1 billion in sustainable state annual state savings, largely through health care, deliver, better delivery of health care to public sector employees. Guess what? There's another about $400 million associated with that at the local level. That could be looked at as potential property tax relief. We are now finally getting toward fully funding public education and the formula, whereas under Governor Christie, the state had stepped way back and put all the pressure locally. Now we're stepped up again, like we are with NJ Transit. That should take some of the local pressure off for property tax relief. I've got two shared services czars, one Democrat, one Republican, running up and down the state trying to find ways to save money. So I want John to make sure uh, that he knows, I know he knows, but that I know this is a this is a, a a reality we've got to break the back of, and we will at the same time with folks saying, you know what, it's worth it to live in New Jersey. And his quick follow up is actually he's not concerned about now because he makes a nice living, but he's concerned about retirement. He's That's, saying down the road, he's like, I can pay it now. Yeah, when I'm so, 65, what do I do? Listen, you know? if you're about 30 until you're in your as I am in the low to mid 60s and you're working, 
and you've got kids in school, mm -hmm. we remain the state of choice. It's my job to keep it that way. Great public education, NJ Transit getting fixed, etc. cetera. Uh, for young people, we got a, a separate uh, set of policies to keep them here and to get them here. Incubators, deepening higher ed, making higher ed affordable, communities they want to walk and live in, NJ Transit. For John's point, when he retires and he's not working and his kids are out of school, and he looks at his property tax bill, and he says to his significant other, hey, 53% of this is for public education, and I've got no, we've got no kids in school anymore. we got to make it work for them, which is why that property, that homestead rebate matters. That's why that $400 million of, of savings on, alongside the $1.1 billion we're saving of the state, getting that into property tax relief, that's why that matters, why the state funding public education as a real partner matters. So it's going to be a lot of small steps, and I'll tell John I'm taking him so that when he does retire, he's got no choice. But he'll say, you know what, we're staying in New Jersey. Excellent. Uh, Governor Phil Murphy again on Facebook Live here on 1010 Wins. I'm Glenn Shuck. We're going to uh, move to legal uh, recreational use of marijuana, which um, I, I previously, before you even came in, there were some questions on here. I don't have to list all the names. A lot of people have questions still. And one was an interesting one that a reporter probably would ask again is that, do you, did you feel any political damage from this, that it went to the point that it did but didn't go through? I felt no damage politically because we gave it everything we got, and I think people realize that. I also pe think people realize that history doesn't get made overnight. Right. Some of these, some of the big quantum leaps forward in history uh, take take some time, uh, and and you have fits and starts. And somebody reminded me: look at the Apollo program in this in the '60s between John Kennedy's. Uh, statement, we're going to get to the moon and, and the, the fits and starts, and in that case, tragedies that befell the program. So I, I'm still optimistic we're going to get there. Um, I, I got in immediately after I got in office, we opened up the medical marijuana regime. Mm -hmm. uh, Governor Christie had gummed that up. We were one of the first in the states of the nation to have that regime, and it was all gummed up. Uh, I'm proud to say we've opened that up. I, we need to open it up further. So uh, while I'm optimistic on, on getting adult use marijuana legislated sooner than later. And I think the, the leadership in both chambers uh, shares that optimism and that desire. Uh, I just want to say for those who rely on the medical marijuana side of the equation, which is now 40 something thousand with a lot of demand to be even higher or go, go higher, uh, that's something we can't have unending patience on. We're going to have to make a move on that uh, through executive action if we can't get it done legislatively. I think we'll get there, though. I think we'll get adult use done. I don't know when. I hope it's sooner than later. Is there anything new developments in recent days in terms of meeting behind the scenes and getting this? Yeah, I'd say, we're talking about the fall now. Is that what we're looking I at? Hope I hope not. I hope we can look at before that. Uh, but the, the leaders of the both chambers, the Senate president and the speaker, really have to make the assessments in, inside of their respective chambers as to, as to the momentum and whether or not they think they can get the votes. We were all in trying to help them do that. I think we worked well, the three of us together. I look forward to doing so, continuing to do so. Our teams have met regularly now over the past week or so. So we'll see. I hope it's sooner than that. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's what my late colleague Stan Brooks used to we, say. We are stay still tuned. very much committed to it. Please stay tuned. We appreciate that. Governor Phil Murphy again, the state of New Jersey at Facebook Live here. I'm Glenn Shuck on 1010 Wins. Let's talk uh, presidential politics. Oh, my Lord. I have to ask, too, uh, you know, is there a President Murphy somewhere down the road? There is, is not. There is not. Are there you is sure? Not. I'm, I'm, not only am I sure, I might be the only elected Democrat that you will ever interview, at least in this cycle, who's not running for president. <laughs> yes. No, no interest. No uh, interest. Great passion about winning the White House, right. but not me. Because you certainly have experience on the on the world stage. I mean, in the work you did in Germany with I the do. ambassadorship, I do. but no interest. I'm proud. No interest. I'm, I'm, my nose is completely pressed against the New Jersey glass, and it'll stay that way. And and you did, you did support uh, Senator Booker, correct? Or I 100% came out immediately, endorsed him. First of all, I think we got a bunch of really qu high-quality candidates in this field. There's just no qu question about that. Uh, I've known Senator Booker since way back when, since he was a councilman in Newark. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been with him when he won, when he lost. Um, he has been, I think he was, he's been an extraordinary public servant as a councilman, as a mayor, importantly, because that's a chief executive's job, as a senator, and his life story is... Is, is just one of the best I've ever been around. I'm a big fan. The treatment that these candidates are receiving, though, do you understand why someone would, who's very highly qualified may not want to get into the presidential area? You see what uh, Joe Biden's going through now, and I, if you don't mind me saying, I believe you're 
you know, you, you have a nice relationship we, with him. Very close to very, Joe. Very and, close. I mean, what, how do you feel when you see him going through what he's going through now? Listen, I think, first of all, as a general matter, you don't, you don't seek that office without going into it with your eyes open. Right. And the amount of heat you get, in particular in the social media world in which we live in, and God knows what the Russians are doing as part of that. You never know. There's always going to be some um, uh, mystery around that. But you, you have to go into this with your eyes open, even at my much smaller, uh, less significant level in a state. You've got to go into that with your eyes open, with your family. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's tough stuff. Um, as it relates to, uh, to, to Vice President Biden, I'm a huge fan. Uh, he's been very good to me over the years. Um, he's one of the guys who talked to me with great intensity about running for office way back when. Um, and and I, I've never seen one speck, one shred of any evidence that he has untoward intentions, period, f- full stop. But I also would say as the time, the times they are changing. Yes. And as the times change, I think we all have to change uh, our our behavior within those times. And I think that's probably the lesson that I think uh, that I'd take away from this right now. But as a general matter, you know, it's a it's a tough world out there. You better go into it with your eyes open. I assume you think he'd be a good candidate, though. So. Oh, I'm a big big fan, without question. Again, I'm I've endorsed Senator Booker. Uh, he's our senator. He's a dear friend. But I think there's a range of candidates, including Vice President Biden, on our side of the aisle, who I think would make great presidents. We have three or four minutes left. Glenn Schuck from 1010 Wins here on Facebook Live. We're glad you could join us. Very honored to have Governor Murphy here stopping in here in New York City on this side of the Hudson today. Uh, this we pre- side of the Hudson, yes. We appreciate it. I, had a, I saw a couple names from the Bergen County Executive's Office uh, pop up here. They wanted me to ask you about American Dream. Oh, good. Um, and I live in Bergen County myself. And I, I know this has been in the pipeline. There are a lot of jokes about <laughs> American Dream, but... You know, when you look at the what this is going to be, it's a big deal. It, can you talk? I mean, this is one. Speaking of, but, of Joe Biden, it's a big deal. I, but I, I read something that it's one of the biggest projects. Yeah. On the Western Hemisphere. Or so something I was like, with triple five. It, and all I, group, yeah. Exactly. So I was talking to one of my colleagues this morning about this. This thing has been around, I think, since 05. Does that sound right? It's been around forever. It was Governor before I was born. McGreevy or no? That was 1905, by the way, not 2005. <laughs> uh, it, so first point I'd say is, Glenn, it's going to happen. Okay. So, 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 and the so, people are saying when? when yeah, when, I when. don't see any scenario where it doesn't happen. So that's right. an important point because there were many years yes. where the, you, we couldn't answer that question. Right. Uh, and they are saying late summer. Now, it slipped. I think they had wanted to be March or April. It's now they're saying late summer. The last thing I read, I'm not, I don't have insight into that. Right. But I do know this. For instance, they are testing the amusement rides. Uh, and, and, and that's probably a good sign. That is. Yeah. Uh, they're encasing, as we speak, the water park. You're starting to see some of the retailers put their names up. Saks Fifth Avenue's name is now up on the side of the building. I think there are about 2,000 workers, overwhelmingly uh, organized labor, I'm, I'm happy to say, working on this every day. But the big deal is when it's up and fully running, over 16,000 workers a day mm. and another 6,000 ancillary in the spider web of employment. And I think that's something like a billion two of payroll eventually for New Jersey. And it's probably 140 something million in taxes. So this is a big, big deal. It will happen slower than any of us probably would have wanted. uh, But it's a big deal. I think when people see an actual opening, they'll, they'll yeah. say, wow, now it is. Yeah, but, a- but you understand why people would think that it's never going to be open. Uh, sure. But I'll tell you, when I heard that they're testing their rides in the amusement park side of this, I thought, you know what? You're not doing that unless you're getting ready to play with live ammo. I know New Jersey Hall of Fame is going in there as well. I, I helped with Steve Edwards and his team yes. there. Yes. And Glenn, you uh, should be considered. Oh, please, no. New Jersey guy? If John Montone is watching. He's going to have something to say about I that. I want to hear about John that, John Montone yes. and I are both Jersey. Uh, okay, John can also be well, a finalist. If I, have, if I have your endorsement, I might have a leg up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they've done some great work there. You go to Newark Airport now, and I have saw these banners of Buzz Aldrin. and Love it. And when you see that for New Jersey, what does great that mean? Great pride. I mean, uh, my wife and I were, were, uh, were at the, the induction uh, this past year, in yes. the, which they did in Asbury Park, and it was an incredible night. You know, you're hanging out, you're hanging out with uh, the likes of Frankie Valley and, yeah. and just an extraordinary. And, and New Jersey punches way above its weight in terms of folks who have contributed meaningfully to all walks of society. We're the 11th largest state as it relates to population. I think we're the ninth largest economy. 
but we punch way above our weight. Meryl Streep, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just an incredible Buzz Aldrin. You mentioned it's all it's all walks of life. So great pride, great Jersey pride. I saw Steve Van Zandt in an exhibit there in Newark Airport. It's pretty cool. You bet. Minute left. Uh, a couple of people asked me uh, as we finish up with Governor Murphy here on Facebook Live again about a minute. A couple of people, a similar question, saying, what do you think your biggest challenges, say, in the next six months or through the 2019, just to kind of summarize what's... I, I think it is doing more of the same. You, you know, we inherited a, a state that was a fiscal and economic train wreck. It didn't grow, and it had huge inequities, particularly along racial and gender lines. So I, I don't want to disappoint anybody, but we're three yards in a, off tackle every day. We're just grinding out, getting to a better place. So far, so good. We presented a budget that I'm really proud of. We save money. We stabilize the fiscal reality. We have a huge investment in the middle class. We are the quintessential middle class state. And it's, we've got tax fairness. The wealthiest need to pay their fair share so we can make that investment. You're going to see more of that in the uh, in the months and years ahead. Governor Phil Murphy, thank you again. This is Facebook Live with Tencha Wins. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Glenn. I feel like I'm one step closer to the Hall of Fame now. That's, I uh, love that. Great that's about as close here. as I'm going to get. Great so to be here. thank you for your time again. We'll see you again. And thanks for being with us here. Tencha Wins Facebook page. Have a good afternoon.